I'm back with another update for all 15 of you who are using my Reaper configuration. This one is going to be focused more on the theme. I have just one shortcut that I changed, but everything else is about the theme. So let's get the shortcut out of the way. I have a video file right here. If I play it, you can see that moving. At the studio, I do a lot of post-production, so I'm always using videos. And I need to disable audio for the video or disable video to just have the audio. And if you've done that before, you would have to select the item and right click on it and then go go to properties or you have to right click in the video window and go to video item properties that's a lot of steps I don't want to waste my time like this so that's the shortcut it's called item properties show media item source properties I assigned it to the tilde key and on Mac I assigned it to that weird sign on the top left side of the keyboard and now I can just select the item quickly and hit that key and open that window disable audio or disable video you may not need that but I use it a lot in my job and it makes my life easier now if you look just like that what do you notice the biggest change look very closely what do you notice the routing button. I changed the routing button for all the scalings and all the states. That took me three whole days, I kid you not, because the routing button has eight different states and each of those will have three different scalings, 100%, 150 and 200% for different size screens. And also there's one version for the mixer and another version for the arrange view. So that's in total 48 different icons just to change the routing button. But it looks amazing and I love it. So just to give you an idea how it looked before, this is the default routing button. It has three stripes. The first one is to indicate that it is in the mix. So let's call that main. And the second stripe is to indicate that it's sending out audio. And the third stripe is to indicate that it's receiving audio. Now you might argue that this is not a bad design, but to me, it's always like I'm counting. Okay, the first is main, the second one send, third one receive. I can't just look at it and immediately know what's happening. I have to think about it and I don't want to do that. So I thought, what is something more intuitive? What do we know from live sound? I think anybody who sees up and down arrows will just guess that it's about routing. Up is going out and down is going in. So that's exactly exactly what I did. I designed the routing button around that up arrow going out, down arrow going in. So let's remove everything. This track is going nowhere. It's not receiving from anybody. Everything is off. If I put it in the mix, the border gets turned on. If I'm sending it to another track, the up arrow gets lit up, meaning it's sending out audio. If it's receiving audio from another track, the down arrow gets lit up. So right here at a glance, I can know that this track is in the mix and it's receiving audio. This track is in the mix and it's sending out audio. This track is not in the mix and sending out audio. This track is not in the mix and receiving audio. I can very quickly know what's happening just by looking at it without counting the stripes. One main, two, send, three, receive. And I did that for all three different scalings. And also I did that for all three different scalings of the arrange view. So if you look right here, you can see that routing button. It's a little bit wider because the original routing button is wide. And you can see it right here for 200%. And I'm really really proud of that. I'm really happy with it. It looks really good in my personal opinion. Keep in mind, I'm doing all this for myself and just sharing it with the 15 or 17 people who are using it. <laughs> so in my personal humble opinion, I think that is a lot more intuitive than the default routing button. Also something that you may or may not notice is the tap tempo. In the previous version, it was squared, not rounded like the other ones. And I really hoped nobody would notice because here's the thing. I couldn't figure out where's the image or what it was called that would be in the background of the tap tempo. Everything else, I know where it is. I know what's the name. I can change the image and make it look different but this one didn't seem to have a name and then i found just the bottom half of it where you type the numbers and make it have round corners but the top would stay the same and it was really bothering me so i went into the rt config file that is written in walter and i found the part where it defines the background color of that bpm section that's it right here trans bpm tab so the colors are right here and i made it all black i could only have sharp corners because it's just a solid background 
Then I finally figured out that it was called transaction background. And the reason I tried this before, I tried changing it, but it didn't change anything. And the reason for that is because I'm using the 150% scaling on the transport and I was changing the normal 100% image. So it finally clicked and I went into that 150% folder right here and I found that image. It's this one and I changed it and it did change. So I changed it for all three scalings to make it look pretty and uniform like everything else with these rounded corners. Also the rate knob, I noticed that for the other scalings, I didn't have it correct. The color was different. So I also changed the color of the rate knob and the other scalings. And I also made the BPM section slightly narrower in width. It was wider than that. It was about the width of this rate section. So I went into the RT config file, the Walter file and changed the width because like it doesn't need to be very wide. How much text will you have in a temple? Let's say like 900 BPM. Nobody's going to do that. So that's enough width for that section. Also, I forgot to mention that I fixed the zoom presets 3 and 4 and 5. Let me just make any clip right here. If I'm playing and I hit a zoom preset while I have continuous scrolling going on, so Reaper is moving the view. The way I was doing it before, it was snapping very harshly. So it was doing something like that when I hit a preset. Now I fixed it to where even if I'm playing back with continuous scrolling, I can hit 3 and 4 and 5 and the playback will continue normally to just zoom in and out without actually moving the view very harshly. Something I need to mention is if you just synchronize your packages, you will receive this new theme. However, because I changed the name from default 7.0-dan to Daniel, some of the settings in the theme will not come along. And I'm not really sure why that happens. But for example, the markings on the track will go away and these buttons right here in the arrange view will get switched around different order because apparently these settings get saved in the Reaper configuration file, not in the actual theme. So if you want to keep everything the same, you will have to re-import my new configuration file or maybe just import the color theme and change the name back to Dan and I guess that will fix it. If you don't know how to do that, I have made a video, I'll link it in the description box below of how to install my configuration and the, some things that you might need to change on different systems. Not a lot of crazy changes in this update, but I think these things are important. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, click on the video on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.